Hello, everybody. Welcome into another episode of the Couch GM's podcast. It is Tuesday, November 30th, 2021. I'm your host, George Kurth, here along with Tyler Snyder. Tyler, how are you? You know, the Titans lost back to back games and uh, their entire rosters on IR. Kevin Byard put on the COVID list on our bye week. So we're even losing on our bye week. So uh, you could say I've been better. But I hope you at least had a good Thanksgiving. And we got Cody Roadcap as well. Cody, did you have a good Thanksgiving? I had a great Thanksgiving. Ate a lot of mac and cheese. Uh, the games weren't the best on Thanksgiving Day, but the, the it was still nice to have football. Other than that, I mean, the Packers were the only one of the couch GMs to get a win. Uh, the only downside is my fiance got her Packer stock in the mail before me. So I'm a little bummed about that. But other than that, we're doing good. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm sure it's coming. But uh, for the fans out there, we're going to talk today a little bit of NFL news and notes. I guess it's not a little. There's a lot that happened this past weekend. And we're going to break down the waiver wire for week 13, which is probably one of the deepest waiver wires for this late in the season that I can remember. And it's probably because of injuries, but we'll get to that in a few seconds. Make sure you find us on the couchgms.com and on our social media channels to get even more than you get on this podcast. And why don't we then jump into NFL news? So in NFL news, like I said, it is injuries. And I'm sure some of these we could speed through, but the first couple are pretty important. So I got to start off with, yet again, Christian McCaffrey is injured, and this time it will take his season. So anybody out there, watch for Chubba Hubbard, and anyone who drafted CMC first overall, this is the second year in a row, you got to bust. Yeah, injuries have definitely destroyed uh, the last two seasons for CMC. He's been productive fantasy-wise when he was out there, uh, but he just hasn't been out there. It'll be interested to see after two seasons now, is he still a top pick heading into to next season? I saw Him, Derrick Henry, I mean, the whole top 12 that, that we're all talking about, I think eight of the t- top 12 guys have missed time or on IR at this point for, for injuries. It was a rough year for the first-round draft picks, but I, I'm more interested to see where CMC is going to end up heading into the 2022 fantasy season. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we'll have to be breaking that one down in a few weeks, but we have a little bit to talk about beforehand. Uh, Dalvin Cook is another running back who got banged up this past weekend. I mean, I I know Tyler and I were together watching the play. We totally thought he had a leg caught up under him and it looked really bad. It's still bad, but it's not a leg injury. It's a torn labrum in his shoulder as he dislocated it going to the ground. It is uh, to be determined on his timeline, but it looks like at least a two to four week injury. What are your thoughts here on this one, Tyler? Um, you know, it's, it's a really weird thing because they were talking about him and, you know, I could be wrong, but, uh, after reading the reports on him, it sounds like he's had shoulder injuries his entire career dating all the way back to high school. And like, it's very common for him to dislocate his shoulder and for them to just pop it back in and him go back out and play again. Um, apparently that's a common thing for him. Uh, I did not know that, but they said this time when it, popped out of place they could not get it back in which means they knew something was torn and obviously now we know it is a torn labrum so i mean it's something that he's been dealing with his entire life so i feel like if he's going to be able to come back a little sooner and play through just pain it's going to be him that's going to be able to do it but this is definitely a big week a big injury i think madison becomes a huge fantasy play now um but really the question is going to be what do the vikings do if the vikings start winning games now they look like they're going to make the playoffs they might just rest rest alvin cook all the way up to the playoffs and make sure he's okay for that if they look like they're on the verge and they might miss the playoffs they might bring him back a little bit sooner to try to get that extra push to get into the playoffs so i really think how long he's out is actually not going to depend on him it's going to depend on where the Vikings are. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Uh, I think you're pretty safe that he'll miss all the way up until at least the fantasy championship game. Now, unfortunately, if you ride Madison all the way to the championship game and Dalvin Cup comes back, hopefully Madison's still productive and in his first game back, and it's a little bit of a pitch count. Um, But it is crazy. I believe he missed the time earlier this season with a torn labrum in his other shoulder. So now he'll be playing with a torn labrum in both. Uh, so that pain management has to be difficult. 
Uh, so Madison is definitely the guy to pick up, and we'll have to see. The Vikings could fall out of playoff contention, and then he's just done for the year. Uh, that This is very similar to their 2019 playoff run where we saw Madison come in at the second or the last couple of weeks. They rested Dalvin Cook to get him ready for the playoffs. Uh, we're looking for that again this year. You know, that haunts me because that was the first year my girlfriend ever played fantasy, and yet she's made it all the way to the fantasy championship. And uh, she had Christian McCaffrey, Derrick Henry, and Nick Chubb all in the same league. And with Derrick Henry out and McCaffrey out, she needed a running back for that championship. And Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison were both out. So Alex Boone was the starting running back for the Vikings. And I told her to pick her up, pick him up and start him because, I mean, the Vikings are a running team. This guy's going to have a big day. And boy, did he ever bust. And he's the reason she lost the championship. So uh, I still have not lived that season down. Mike Boone is one of those players that will haunt you forever. And I'm sure we all have those players. So, well, we're not dealing with Mike Boone, at least. Right now it is Alexander Madison. We'll talk more waivers as we go along here. Uh, another running back injury. DeAndre Swift back on Thanksgiving was hurt, missed the almost the entire game. I want to say it was the first or second quarter he went out, uh, but he is listed as day to day right now. The extra rest appears to be helping him with their like mini buy going on here. It's going to be an injury we have to monitor as the week goes on. Definitely not as bad as the other two, but Jamal Williams might be a, a little bit of a good handcuff for you if you're out there as a DeAndre Swift owner. Yeah, this one was tough. I remember watching the play live, and we both were like, we're no doctors, but – or not both, there's three of us. But we were like, we're no doctors, but that looks like a broke collarbone from just the way he was holding it. So for him to actually be day-to-day, that's a sigh of relief for any DeAndre Swift owners out there. You mentioned Jamal Williams. He didn't look great, I mean, but the Lions aren't a great team. But So he, he's not going to be a guy that, you know, he shouldn't be your highest priority. Like if Matt's, Matson's out there, definitely go get – him over Jamal Williams, but he'll get carries, he'll get volume. And we saw, you know, Swift still had three points going out in the first quarter because, like, on the first drive, they threw three straight passes to him. They like to get their running backs involved. So hopefully Swift gets back in time for the fantasy playoffs. Definitely. Um, But I guess there's not really much else for us to say there. We can give you an update on DeAndre Swift going into our next episode as we preview the the rest of the week. Um, someone who plays on Thursday, Ezekiel Elliott. He also played last Thursday. He is currently getting uh, a workload limit in practice being rested. He seems to have been banged up with various things throughout the season. So I'm sure that's why the Cowboys are trying to limit his workload. Do you guys think this is going to be bigger for Pollard now, or is this just a practice workload? And we see this all the time. Then guys go out there and just get their full uh, snap counts. Well, Pollard was used heavily in that Thanksgiving game. Um, it was kind of frustrating for Zeke owners and Pollard owners because Pollard kind of got the carries to get them all the way down the field. And then when they got the goal line, uh, Zeke just pushed it in. Um, So Zeke got the touchdowns, but didn't get the carries enough to get a great day. And Pollard got the carries, but didn't get the scores to give him the great day. So they both kind of ended up being mediocre. Um, So Pollard has been heavily used. I think it's turning into a split backfield where you could probably start both of them. Um, but I still think Zeke is definitely the better play. And it is worth noting that he did get full participation in practice today. So uh, they're leaning towards giving him his full workload going into this Thursday night game. Yeah, it's just more of something to keep an eye on because we did see him, you know, Pollard getting some additional reps. There was reports right after the Thursday night game through the weekend that they were considering shutting him down, doing a similar situation to uh, we just talked about with Dalvin Cook. You know, they're pretty set on making the playoffs. Let's get him healthy, rested 100% for the playoff run. Um, if the knee continues to bother him, that could be something we're looking in that could be in the weeks to come. So we'll have to monitor. But like Tyler said, full participant uh, on pr- this day in practice. So signs are pointing good that, that he actually won't end up missing time. And we will be talking more Cowboys at the end of our show into our Thursday night preview. Moving on to the tight end position here for a second. Darren Waller also had it suffered an injury on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was rough. I feel like um, looked like a very bad knee injury ends up being some kind of knee injury. I don't even remember. And I feel like it's a band I've never heard of. I don't even know T band, something like that. I don't know. Um, 
I guess it's not a ligament. It's a sprain. It's a week to week injury. He is to be determined on this week, but I would say he's probably not going to play if I had to guess. So try to find other options if you are a Darren Waller owner and there's no idea if he's going to be playing 100% of the snaps like he usually does if he even does play this week. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, I guess that's about all we need to say for that one. So let's go ahead and move into some uh, some more running back news. I know we had some running back news earlier, but this might be the best running back of all of them, and that is Debo Samuel uh, because he's a running back, not a receiver. Uh, he is expected to miss one to two weeks uh, with a groin pool. It was, again, another one of those plays where you watched it happen. And I remember George and I were together for this play, and we were like, how do you even get hurt? Like, it didn't look like anything mm-hmm. happened. And then it ended up, we couldn't even figure out what he hurt. And then it ended up being a groin pool. But he's expected to miss one to two weeks with it. Um, yeah, he ended up turning into the best hype man slash water boy in the league because he was running out there, giving his players water on the breaks and everything. So at least he was still being utilized even even when he's injured. You got to love a team player like that. Debo Samuel, definitely fun to watch. Um, I know with him missing time, you could see a little bit of an increase in Brandon Ayuk. It will be interesting to see how the running backs – I know Elijah Mitchell is definitely still the number one running back on the team. As in terms of carries, I mean, Debo definitely had the more explosive day on Sunday. But we'll see if Jeff Wilson gets involved anymore. So just something to monitor uh, for that one. Uh, but, George, why don't you talk about your guy, Jalen Hurts. I believe he tweaked his ankle. Yeah, Jalen Hurts apparently suffered an ankle injury at some point on Sunday. He finished out the game. We didn't hear anything about it until a Monday press conference. And the Eagles say that they're going to monitor him throughout the week. They'll they'll tell us more after the Wednesday practice, but it could affect his availability this next coming week against the Jets is all that we're told. So it's going to be a wait and see situation. It doesn't sound like a major injury, but going into the bye against a team like the Jets, you may see Gardner Minshew under center for the Eagles. At least you're playing the Jets. If you have to miss Jalen Hurts for a week, (laughs) at least it's the Jets. Yeah, and mustache magic for a week. And we can talk about it on Thursday if we actually don't think Jalen Hurts (laughs) will go. Uh, But even if he does, it'll be something to monitor because he's been so dominant in fantasy because of his rushing ability. If he's limited in that, even though it is against the Jets, that is something you might want to consider. But we'll talk more about that going into our Thursday podcast. But the last guy we have to talk about, fan favorite. Couch GM's podcast favorite, Dan Arnold. He'll be out four to six weeks, which essentially means their season is over because it's the Jags and they're not going to bring this guy back with a week left just because they'll let him rest it out. So Dan Arnold's season is over. You can take his name off the dartboard. Uh, But that wraps up most of the injuries. I'm sure we missed one or two because there was just so many this week. This week was brutal when it came to injuries. I'm like so sick of... Twitter, sleeper, NFL notifications that somebody else has been injured or missing practice time. Uh, But, yeah, that definitely hits all the injuries. One thing we'll talk about more a little bit later uh, when we do the Thursday night preview, but there is a little bit of a COVID outbreak uh, going on through Dallas right now. They have six players, I believe, is the number that they're at on the COVID list. And Mike McCarthy will also won't be able to coach uh, on Thursday night. So just something to keep an eye on as COVID goes through Dallas. Hopefully everyone is staying healthy. And with it being a Thursday night, it could be the potential for the first game that gets rescheduled in 2021. Man, I hope not. I know the NFL was so strict about you guys got to be able to play your games on time. If there's a COVID problem, it's a forfeit. Like, I I think this is the first time where the NFL is going to be tested on that theory and see if they'll let them push it to a Saturday or a Sunday instead of letting them play on a Thursday if the Cowboys outbreak gets any worse than it already is. Yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see. I think the league has to put its foot down a little bit. I mean, I know nobody's purposely going out there and getting COVID, but there's still measures you can take. When you're a pro athlete and you're making millions of dollars or you're a coach and you're making millions of dollars to be out there on the field, like do whatever you have to do. If you have to stay indoors and lock yourself in a bubble for a season, do it. Um, But it should be interesting to see how they treat this. I could see them because it's a Thursday night game pushing it back this Sunday. And if they can't perform on Sunday, forfeiting it. Um, but I could see if this was a Sunday game originally and they were in this situation 
it getting forfeited. Yeah, I, I yeah, think it's so a time will tell on that. Oh, good. I was just going to say, I, I agree with you. I think if it was Sunday, they would play it just like other teams have played with, you know, all three quarterbacks out and starting a wide receiver. Like they'd make them play with Thursday. That's why I only think the reason I think it could be potentially moved, but hopefully not. Hopefully we still have a Thursday night game. But as I interrupted George, that's just because he's so eager to get to his favorite segment, Quotes of the Week. Quotes of the Week this week. Um, I just wanted to talk about the Vikings because Kirk Cousins likes to line up under guards now. Um, I don't know if you guys saw that one, but Mike Zimmer on top of Kirk Cousins lining up under the wrong offensive lineman. Uh, accused the 49ers of a ton of holding calls that were just not called. And George Kittle decided to come back when his uh, press conference this week and say, I just tell your guys to make better plays. So, so a little bit of a uh, rivalry going on between the Vikings and the 49ers out of nowhere, I guess. I don't know if it's a rivalry between teams or if Kittle just likes to talk smack. I would say the second well, one's a little yeah. bit stronger. <laughs> I believe it was 2019, though, the 49ers beat the Vikings in the playoffs. And we were talking about that strategy to get Dalvin Cook back for that game. And then I think there was some questionable calls at the end of that game, too. So there's probably a little bit of, you know, butting heads, we'll say. Uh, But, yeah, honestly, like, there's been so many freaking penalties this season. Like, I'm so tired of it. 28 penalties in the Dallas Raiders game, 14 on each team. Like, how are we there? You know, we got to try to find some common ground like the the random false starts because the center bobs his head that he does on every play you call it once once a game like be consistent figure something out that we just got to get better uh with refereeing sorry for the little tangent we are in quotes of the week so i should probably go to the next quote george is pointing at me i'm just i'm just trying to point at somebody to get a taunting call i don't know oh gotcha oh be careful i don't want our podcast to get shut down you <laughs> pointed at me uh but you know, speaking oh, of taunting, this this next quote could fall along, fall under the NFL rules of taunting. Devontae Adams was talking to Michael Irvin before the game, um, and he was talking about Odell Beckham and the fact that the Packers were, you know, a team in the mix for Odell Beckham. And he said he talked to him two days prior, and he asked him to go get it if he could get his jersey after the game. And Devontae Adams responded with, "Go get a Cooper Cup jersey, since that's obviously his guy, and that's who he wanted to beat with." So it seems like a little bit of friendly frustration there. Um, I do know after the game, Devontae Adams did give him a jersey. He sent it to the locker room and said, don't leave another hole in the locker room after we beat them. Referencing back to when the Packers beat the Giants after the infamous boat trip and Odell Beckham punched a hole in the visiting locker room in Lambeau Field. So a lot of fun between Adams and Odell Beckham. And it, Adams proved on Sunday that he is still the superior wide receiver. If that was even a debate. It wasn't. It wasn't a debate, but still spoken like a true Packers fan over there. <laughs> Had to. <laughs> All right. I think that wraps up our quotes of the week. So why don't we get into what everybody here is waiting for? And that'll be the week 13 waiver wire. And don't forget, guys, you can check out our waiver wire column on the couch every week. There's a lot of guys this week. We're probably going to have a little bit of a rundown of all of them, but you can get a little bit more in depth on some of those guys on the article on the couch gems.com. While we start off with quarterbacks, we got one on our list this week and it is Carson Wentz. So he has 42% owned. He's a little bit more widely owned than some of the guys we put on these articles, but he has been very consistent lately. He's finally starting to come into his own as well as the Colts are, even though they did blow another lead. But that doesn't matter in fantasy. Carson Wentz has been solid lately. He is really coming together in that offense like we expected. And he's a solid uh, fantasy starter for some of these bye weeks or maybe even a matchup-based starter in the playoffs this year. Yeah, he's the number 10 ranked quarterback uh, this week. And he's also uh, facing off against the Texans. So, I mean, he does have a bye week after the Texans game, so it is just a one-week fill-in. But in case you have any quarterback injuries or you don't like the matchups or, uh, you know, bye weeks, obviously, there's a guy you could potentially pick up and slot in at quarterback. 
Yeah, I like it. I like it this week. I'm also going to go out on a limb and say you could probably start T.Y. Hilton. He always explodes against Houston. They call him T.Y. Houston. Uh, so there's a little extra curricular waiver wire addition if you're really into the Colts offense. Our next guy will move to the running back position, and we talked about at the top of the show, Dalvin Cook is out for the next couple of weeks, and that means it's a no-brainer for you to go out and pick Alexander Mattinson. He has some time filling in for Dalvin Cook already this season. He had a couple games where he was you know, scoring 19 points, 17 points. Those are good numbers for a fantasy, especially a guy that's off of waivers. He probably was held on for a long time waiting for Dalvin Cook. I know, unfortunately, in our league of record, George literally dropped him nine days ago. That's how long he held on to him, dropped, and he finally is coming back to haunt him. So make sure he's picked up. He's only a, he's only owned about 19.8% of NFL.com leagues. So definitely a guy you should be out there targeting. And, you know, if you're in need of it, you spend all but $10 of your, your fab money at this point to go get a guy like Alexander Mattins. He, he's that big of a difference maker. You don't find guys like this available this late in the season very often. Yeah, I completely yeah, agree. There's... He's a guy you can slot right into your starting lineup every week and feel totally fine for the rest of the season. Uh, you know, I'm going to stick with pretty much the same kind of mentality. It's an obvious one, but Christian McCaffrey is out for the season. So if anybody dropped Chuba Hubbard, he's actually only 29% owned, which is surprising to me. If I was a McCaffrey owner, you would have bet that I would have had Chuba on my bench to make sure. But Look, people dropped him. He's wasn't picked up in some leagues. Chuba Hubbard is now a starting running back the rest of the season. It's another guy you should be able to slot right in there. It's your starting lineup, just like you did earlier in the season, and feel confident with it. So uh, Chuba Hubbard is another guy you can go after if you need running back help. I'm sure we're probably going to get a question somewhere of where should your first waiver wire be, Madison or, who, or Hubbard? It's got to be Madison if they're both available. Let's start with that just because Madison is a much big, bigger boom player. He probably averages it between like 17 and 20 points a game when he's actually getting all those carries. Hubbard was solid without CMC and probably will be solid again. But when we say solid, he probably averaged, I think it was like 10 or 11 fantasy points a game. So he's not as much of a boom player as a Madison, but he's great to go out there and he can just fill in and just be that 10 points in your running back spot if you need it. Um, I'll stick with the running back position with a much less long-term fill. Uh, Jamal Williams, because we are dealing with the DeAndre Swift injury, there's a chance he misses this week or even another week after that. So Jamal Williams would be an automatic start in my lineup if there is any games that DeAndre Swift misses. So a much less flashy, flashy, a less long-term option, but somebody who could be in your starting lineup this week. Yeah, I don't know if I'd go out on the limb and say Jamal Williams is an automatic start just because it is the Lions, and I don't, like, don't get me wrong, I love... It's a volume thing, though. I love Jamal Williams. I have an autograph football that's right off camera right here of him, favorite, one of my, one and one of my fiancé's all-time favorite players, uh, but just a great guy. But he's still a very talented running back, but he doesn't have the, you know, the breakaway speed that DeAndre Swift does. Like, I don't see him catching a screen pass for 75 yards like we've seen Swift do. Uh, so something like it's a great opportunity. He'll get the targets. He'll get the catches. We saw in week one, they split. He had, what was it? Nine catches in week one, I believe. So they'll get him involved. Uh, but he just doesn't have the big playability that DeAndre Swift does. Yeah, I totally agree with you there, Cody. Um, not a absolutely must start, but definitely somebody you can consider if DeAndre Swift is out. Moving on to the next guy, uh, this is not only a question of should you start him, it's a question of should you pick him up, and it is Matt Breida. Uh, I told you before on the previous podcast, which I know you've heard because you listen to every single episode. Thank you for that. Uh, but the Bills are that team that do you really want any of their running backs? They have three of them. They use all three of them, not consistently, so you don't know which one's going to be the guy. But lately, it's been Matt Breida. That's been the one. So, uh if you are in a deeper league and you're looking for some running back help um, and maybe you have one of the later waiver wire pickups, so you're not going to be able to get a guy like Madison Hubbard or Williams, uh, Matt Breida could be a good guy to target. Yeah, I don't love Breida, but anytime you have a starting running back, they're pretty much ownable and that's where Breida is getting into that territory. Um, I think that's a good for running backs here. We can move on to wide receivers 
I want to hit Van Jefferson. So I know it's a very interesting situation out there in LA with OBJ there. You still have Cooper Cup and then you have Van Jefferson. OBJ, I think they want to get him involved, but obviously he still hasn't been in the system that long. He did actually get banged up a little bit, left the game for a bit this past week. And Van Jefferson's just playing so well. I don't see how the Rams couldn't give him their wide receiver two snaps, at least for now. I love Van Jefferson. I think he was even a potential starter a couple of weeks earlier in the season in good matchups. Now that he's getting the 98% of snaps like he did this past week, he's somebody who definitely should be considered in your lineups and definitely should be more than 17% owned in your fantasy leagues. Yeah, and it's worth noting that uh, Odell Beckham Jr. did suffer a hit pointer. They don't expect to miss any time, but it is something to monitor. Staying with the Rams, we did get some a little bit of breaking news while we were recording this episode. Running back Daryl Henderson has a quad strain. Um, he suffered that in yesterday's game. They're saying it'll be monitored. It doesn't exp- it seem to be anything serious. Um, very similar situation. They're playing the Jaguars this week, so it might be a week that they let them rest easily. So we're going to throw Sony Michelle right into the – the waiver wire aspect here. I don't have, because it's breaking news. I don't have the exact numbers, how much he's owned. Uh, I know I'm kicking myself right now because I literally just dropped Sony Michelle before recording the show to take a flyer on DJ Dallas to see how he would look against the Washington football team. And now I'm regretting that move immensely. So, but Sony Michelle is a guy that you could, again, it doesn't seem like this is a long-term concern, uh, but we've seen Henderson miss a game here or there. And Sony Michelle was definitely a startable running back and it's the Jags next week. So, if you miss out on some of these top guys, look for Sony Michelle. Yeah, moving 8. on to the Rams. percent owned on Sony Michelle, 8. so 1. widely owned there. Widely available. Widely available, yeah, not widely owned. 8.1% yes. is not widely no. owned, but another guy who is not widely owned, and it's a guy who I don't really want to talk about because I watched him catch two touchdowns on my team this week, uh, but that is Kendrick Bourne. It is time to finally talk about Kendrick Bourne. Um, we still look at Jacoby Myers like he is the number one receiver on the Patriots, but Bourne is being so heavily used. And, you know, Mac Jones is starting to gain some confidence in himself and go out there. And instead of just leaning hard on the run game, he's starting to sling it a little bit. And, uh, Anytime that happens, you got to look at those top receiving threats, and Kendrick Bourne is definitely one of them. And the other nice thing about Bourne is he's one of those speedy guys that has the potential for that long, broken touchdown at any point in the game because he just bombs it deep to him. So uh, Kendrick Bourne is definitely worth considering. Um, Is he a guy that you're going to pick up and immediately feel confident enough to slot into your lineup? Maybe not. But if we see the Patriots continue on to the trend that they have been lately – especially after they actually play a good team who is healthy and still win games. If they can prove that and Kendrick Bourne is still heavily utilized, he could end up being a great fantasy playoff starter for you. It's very true. I mean, I feel like because of the way the Patriots run their offense, I hate playing their running backs. I almost hate playing their receivers for the same reason, but Kendrick Bourne has been the guy who's separating himself from the group and, Jacoby Myers would be a lot higher on my list if he actually scored touchdowns. I'm glad he finally scored one. But the man who seems to be getting the touchdowns, at least from the wide receiver position, is Kendrick Bourne. And then it's still mostly Hunter Henry other than that. But yeah, I agree with you. Kendrick Bourne's a great ad. George, well, you got to talk about the next guy. (laughs) Okay. Because he was originally at the beginning of the season, one of my fantasy, my guys, and I knew that there was a chance that this would happen and it finally may be happening. Cole Komet is being used in the Bears offense. I mean, I think the Bears offense in general is getting better, but Cole Komet had 11 targets this past week. I mean, he caught eight, turned in 65 yards. It was a modest 10 and a half point game and a half PPR, but the usage, the fact that the bears are trying to get him involved in the offense now. And it looks like he's starting to come into his own. I like it. We'd look for all those targets and tight ends. And I knew he had the potential. I think I am at least grabbing him and holding him on my bench. If I'm not confident to start him right away, if you're weak at tight end, throw him on the dartboard, put him in your lineup. Cole Komet is finally becoming the tight end. I was hoping he would all season. Yeah. I'm a, I'm going to just play devil's advocate a little bit here. Uh, George has been super hype on Cole Komet 
all season long. And the second that he shows a bit of a flash, George is like, Cole Komet's the guy, it's time. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, yep. Let, let's tamper expectations a little bit. Uh, yes, Cole Komet did have 11 targets this week, which is awesome, but he had two last week. Uh, so only one week re- removed from two targets uh, and a 1.7 point game. Uh, he's also only broken 10 points twice all season. Uh, so he's not a guy that you can feel super confident in right now. Um, but if you're a guy who has like a Darren Waller or... Uh, one of the other tight ends that are on by or injured and free agency really is weak. Maybe you can go pick out, pick up a Cole Komet, but I'm not as thrilled with him as George is. Yeah. I also think, you know, staying on the same train as Tyler, he talked about the two weeks ago, he had two points. Well, two weeks ago, he had Justin Fields throwing the ball last week. He had Andy Dalton and it's already been named that Justin Fields will be back this week. So George, even with Justin Fields, are you still rolling Cole Komet? I don't know why I asked you. You're ago, say well, I guess I shouldn't say two weeks ago. Three weeks ago was the other time that Cole Komet had that 10-plus point game. He had eight targets with Justin Fields at quarterback. So there was a little bit of something coming on. I don't know if that in that game where Fields played half the game and then got replaced by Andy Dalton affected anything, but two weeks or two games ago, Cole Komet had 10 points with Justin Fields this past week. Cole Komet had 10 points with Andy Dalton. I, he's coming alive at least a little bit. All right. Well, Tyler mentioned if you have Darren Waller and you might need a guy this week, instead of looking at Cole Komet, I would suggest you go look at the guy that's sitting on the bench right behind him. We saw when Darren Waller was surprisingly inactive against the Philadelphia Eagles earlier this year. Foster Moreau put up 12 points. That's a great number in half-point PPR for fa- for fantasy tight ends. Heck, eight points this year feels like a great number for fantasy tight ends. So Foster Moreau, he saw six targets when he wasn't in there. He saw five targets in the Thursday night game. He didn't pull down as many catches because they, they didn't practice as much together with Derek Carr, but he definitely got targets in that tight end position um, in the Dallas game after Waller went out. So I do think Foster Moreau is the easy slot if you're missing – Darren Waller this week. And just to put my money where my mouth is, if it was me personally and Darren Waller is out, I would start Foster Moreau before I would start Cole Komet. <sighs> okay. Um, I, I'm smelling a bet happening here. Well, What's it the only bet depends before I say if I'm in Darren or not. Waller is out. <laughs> Yes, there's that caveat. If Waller's out. Yeah, no, I'm not. I, I wouldn't say no. If Waller's in, that's totally void. But if Waller's out. I don't know, George. Are you making you a want? bet, George? George sounds like he's challenging me right here. I, I, I feel like it's I, a challenge. Cody's the third party here. Give us something. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't throw me under the bus, man. I'll even let you think about it if you want. Let's see. What, There's nothing what is... you want to see either of us do here. Uh, I'll come back to it. That's I'll end the show. So you had to listen to the rest of the episode with what the bet will be. Uh, but we got to talk about one more guy, and I don't really know if he's well, worth. Before the we move wire, on, because... before we move on, I'm sorry. I, I was looking up the stats. That's why I was looking away and not saying anything. But I just want to also point out that Darren Waller missed one week this season that one week that he missed was against the Philadelphia Eagles and that game that he missed against the Eagles Foster Moreau had six catches and put up 15 fantasy points which is more than Cole Komet has done all season as a number one um so just a little extra incentive there like that Jimmy Grandpa is not the number one for the Bears (laughs) (laughs) He's not even the number one in his own heart. He's just he's just there. He's just a body. Poor Jimmy Grandpa. Uh, if you guys need a kicker, go get Evan McPherson. Cody, tell him more. <laughs> yeah. I, look, you, everyone knows that list, has listened to the show for a while. I am super anti-kicker in fantasy. I still am. 100%. I think kickers should not be in fantasy football. There's too much variance. Good kickers don't mean good fantasy players. A lot of times the kickers on subpar offenses end up being better. It's not a great position in my mind. 
But I digress, and I'm going to tell you, ride the hot streak. Go out and get Evan McPherson. He had 19 points two weeks ago, 13 points this past week. They have the Chargers this coming week, another matchup where the teams, George is pulling out his headphones so he doesn't hear me because he lost Evan McPherson essentially because of this um, two weeks ago. But the Cincinnati Bengals are a good offense that sometimes sputters, as the, but they always are moving the ball. And that's, whether it's Evan McPherson or not, that's the type of kicker in fantasy you want to go out and look for. You don't want the guy on the high-scoring offense because – they're only getting one point extra point off it. You want an offense that moves the ball, but you know they might struggle on third down. They might be inconsistent. Evan McPherson, and the bonus is Evan McPherson has a huge leg. He can hit those 50-yarders that are five points. Some leagues, they're six or th- they're seven points, depending on bonuses for over 50 yards. He has a leg, so I'd really like Evan McPherson. He's only 5.5% owned. Um, should be another strong week, but again, even though I'm telling you a kicker, Let's still get kickers out of fantasy football. Thank you, Cody. I appreciate the kicker monologue. Um, If you guys have any other questions about waivers, feel free to hit us up if you're wondering which waiver is higher than others. Uh, Before we move on from waivers, though, I do have to throw out uh, one more potential sleeper waiver pickup that you do not have to get this week, and you can wait till next week, uh, and that is Dontrell Hilliard. For the Titans, look, I I know I said don't start any Titans, don't play any Titans, don't pick up any Titans, but this dude got 12.2 against Houston his first week on the team. He got 18 points this week. He's looking like the true number one. He's creating space. He's catching passes. Uh, He's definitely getting heavily utilized, and it doesn't look like Derrick Henry will be back um, before the end of the fantasy playoffs, so this guy should be able to be the starting running back the rest of the season. I'm not saying he's a flashy name. I'm not saying he's a guy you're going to love as much, but if it's between a guy like Dontrell Hilliard or Matt Breida, maybe you're going Hilliard. Uh, The Titans do have a bye this week, so you're not going to play him this week, obviously, Um, but you could steal him on the waivers before other teams are able to get to him next week. Um, Guys, it's just so sad to hear that Dontrell Hilliard is our starting running back, but In other news that we did not say, the Titans did break the record for most players used in a season after only 12 weeks. The previous record was the 2020 49ers, who had 84 players used in one season. Um, The Titans have already hit 86 after 12 weeks, so they are officially the most injured team in NFL history. It is such a lovely stat to see. I am... Super thrilled. Well, they're doing that to themselves, too. Like, I'm not trying to argue their injuries. Like, don't take it that way. But they they are really good at bringing guys in for a week or two, Adrian Peterson, and saying, oh, let's try someone else. Like So I'm not saying that they're not injured, but they're definitely trying to find guys that can contribute, um, which is is something you always want to see. You don't want to see a team give up and be like, okay, we brought in Adrian Peterson. We'll just ride with him. Nope, he wasn't up to standard. After two weeks, we're moving on. So... They're, they're missing a lot of guys. Don't hear what I'm not saying, but I do like their approach of let's let's just keep shuffling this bottom half of this roster until we can find guys that can make a difference. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't happen too often. News. I mean, Adrian Peterson was uh, was definitely one case where they cut a guy and just brought in somebody else to try. But for the most part, the injuries, the people playing have been for injury's sake. I mean, you have uh, – The only reason AP or Dontrell Hilliard or any of these guys are getting carries is because Titans backup Jeremy McNichols was also injured, and he has been out. Uh, Titans fullback, who also has been seen to get carries in the past, he has been out for injury. Um, So their top three rushing options all out. They had to bring in three other running backs, and uh, AP just wasn't getting it done. I mean, you have guys like Cody Hollister getting catches now, but that's because the Titans' top four wide receiver options are all not active, so... I, I see what you're saying, Cody, but for the most part, it is definitely injuries. No, I wasn't saying. I'm just and saying I like their approach. It's definitely injuries. Like, they're right up there with, like, the who they're missing, like the New Orleans Saints. Like, they're missing a lot of top guys. Obviously, they haven't used as many players, but it's been a rough season for a lot of teams with injuries, and at least during the record books. You know, sometimes a, a record is better than no record. Uh, and you guys are still fighting for a top playoff spot, so you're doing something right. 
George, I think you had breaking news, though. All right, let's preview Thursday Night Football. <laughs> I'm just going to give up on my joke after uh, the um, back and forth there. We got to get to Thursday Night Football. We got the Dallas Cowboys traveling to the New Orleans Saints. So uh, we'll start with the Saints side here because their running backs were so beat up this past week. We saw nothing out of Tony Jones, but it's okay because they're probably getting back Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram. So Kamara is the one that missed more significant time. Are you any bit worried about Kamara, especially because they were trying to get Ingram involved before his injury even, or are you still 100% in on Kamara and then still thinking about flexing Ingram? I think it's really interesting with the news that Taysom Hill is supposed to be the starting quarterback, something we've been calling for for a while. But we did see you know, Kamara take a hit a little bit when Taysom Hill took over last season with his injuries with Ingram back there. Don't get me wrong. If, if he's back there, say Kamara is good to go. He's still putting it. I'm still putting him in my lineup. Like I'm not losing a game with Kamara on my bench scoring 30 points. Like that's not happening, but I don't have the same, you know, you know, people were talking about him, you know, as a top, when we draft him, he was in the top four. People were arguing him over guys like Dalvin cook. And Derrick Henry, maybe not on this show, but it was definitely out there in the fantasy universe. I'm not looking at him like that. For, like, he's not a top guy with Ingram there with Taysom Hill. This offense is a little beat up. Uh, you have to play him if he's back. But I think I answered your question, but I also rambled a lot. So if I didn't, I apologize. <laughs> yeah, if it's me, I'm starting Alvin Kamara. I'm confident with him moving forward you drafted him where you drafted him to use him um am i flexing mark ingram look i've never been a fan of flexing a backup running back unless i really have to uh i'm the same guy who has never drafted kareem hunt since he's been on the browns like even kareem hunt who is heavily utilized i still don't even like flexing him um unless i really have to because i don't like playing a backup um, but if you're in that situation where you do have to flex back up, you could do worse than Mark Ingram. We've seen Latavius Murray still be utilized heavily in the Saints offense, even with Kamara there. Um, and Ingram in the past was always used, whether he was the starter or the backup. And now this is no different. Um, he should still get plenty of carries, get plenty of playing time, especially because they're going to want to limit Kamara just a little bit so he can see more playing time. Uh, but if you can play somebody over Mark Ingram, I still would. And I think Cody touched on it also. Taysom Hill is expected to start, and the Cowboys defense has been a lot better than it was in the past, but Taysom Hill is one of those running quarterback cheat codes. We didn't mention him in the waiver wire segment, but he is is he someone that you would go out and add and start? even in a fairly tough matchup for quarterbacks, just because you know he's probably going to get you rushing yards? I'll let Cody take this one. He's the Taysom Hill fan. Well, I think Taysom Hill (laughs) is solid at fantasy because he can rush the ball. Uh, It's a short week. I know he's been there forever, but it's still a short week against the Dallas Cowboys. Let me see how he plays this week. Um you know, if you're des- super flex, you know, leagues, you know, like are two quarterbacks, like then, yeah, pick up Taysom Hill. Like that makes a ton of sense this week. I feel like you can find some better options. And then again, if we see on Thursday, Thursday night that he's out there, you know, throwing 10 times, rushing eight times. Well, OK, we're going to Taysom Hill's a top waiver priority. So if you want to try to get ahead of that, um, you know, maybe if your league doesn't allow or allows you to drop players that have already played and you have a guy that you're already going to cut for somebody else or a guy that might not be very good on your team, go out and pick up Taysom Hill this week. If he ends up being a terrible option on Thursday, you cut him and pick a guy up on Friday. Uh, Those are some ways you can work the bottom end of your roster. Uh, So that's definitely something I would do there. Uh, But I think we should have to talk about the Cowboys a little bit. And the big news is they're getting Cooper back from COVID and CD lamb was close to playing on last Thursday. So I imagine he will clear all the concussion protocols and be back to playing this week. So they get both their number one and number two option there. We can debate who we think the number one and number two is another day, but how do you guys think that affects guys like Michael Gallup, Dalton Schultz with these guys coming back? 
Yeah, well, I'll be the first. I'll go I first. Think... Um, I'll say okay, that the guy I like is Dalton Schultz. Look, I, I want to say that Dalton Schultz is, you know, borderline not playable anymore because of how many mouths they have to feed. But I've said it every week and every week Dalton Schultz is heavily utilized. I, I think it's proven that Schultz is Dak's go to guy. When he is in a bind, he looks for Schultz. He doesn't look to throw it downfield. He doesn't look to hand it off. He doesn't look to run it himself. He looks to throw it short to Dalton Schultz. The guy's getting plenty of targets. And when it comes to the red zone, if it's not Zeke pounding it in from one yard out, it's going to be Dalton Schultz uh, from five yards out. So I think Schultz is the guy that you can definitely start. No problem. George, you want to try to tackle these receivers here, though? I mean, you kind of took what I was going to say there. I think my favorite has to be Dalton Schultz. Um, I mean, I, I'll say that Dak has had a history with Michael Gallup. So if there is another option, like Michael Gallup is definitely your best bet outside of the, those three that we just mentioned. I don't love it. Um, he was the Cowboys leading receiver when it was down to him, Cedric Wilson and uh, Dalton Schultz. So it's not like he hasn't been proven. He had a hundred yard game back on Thanksgiving. You probably could do worse in some situations, considering we are still in bye weeks. We are dealing with all these injuries. Like maybe you're someone with Debo Samuel. You can play Michael Gallup and hope, but he's not my favorite play. Um, he's the only one of the wide receivers I would think about after Cooper and Lamb. I think past that, you're just looking too far. You're trying too hard. Alrighty. Well, I think that's enough for the Thursday night preview. It should be a decent game. Remember that the Saints defense is not what it was like at the beginning of the season. Uh, before we wrap up, I have two things. One, if you guys are still interested in your bet, I think the loser of the bet, because it's we're talking Darren Waller and Cole Komet, so I'm not doing anything crazy. But the loser has to wear a fake mustache the whole sh- whole show the following week. Sold. All yeah. right, so you hear to hear virtual her. handshake. Virtual handshake. If <laughs> if Darren the Waller big caveat, is out, if if Darren Waller is out, yeah. and we're doing half PPR scoring, top score, correct? Top score, not top yardage, not top. It's mm-hmm. top fantasy score between Foster Moreau and Cole Komet. If Darren Waller is out, and half PPR scoring. Half PPR score. And the loser also has yeah. to go to the store and buy the fake mustache for the winner. They're a dollar at Dollar Tree. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's essentially a dollar bet. And with the kill twist. my wallet. <laughs> uh, and then one other thing I do want to talk about we don't really talk about college football uh, too much, uh, but the co- college football landscape is changing pretty quickly as coaches are moving, coaches are leaving. The Lincoln Riley, you know, front runner for head coaches for the Dallas Cowboys before they hired Mike McCaffrey. You know, there was talks of him going to Green Bay before Matt LaFleur. He's had some interest. He just signed a mega contract to be the next head coach of USC. Brian Kelly, the all-time winner head coach in Notre Dame history. I believe that's the correct stat. He might be number two, but he's up there one or two. He is agreeing to go to LSU. Notre Dame has been a dream job for Urban Meyer. He said that on record. Something to keep an eye on uh, this after this season if he <laughs> likes to go back to college. I know we talked about him many weeks ago when he was dealing with his thing. Uh, so something to keep an eye on there. So college football has some openings, a lot of new guys, a lot of places could change how we evaluate players coming out of those organizations. Uh, and I had to throw a jab at Urban Meyer because not really a jab, but, you know, that's how we all do. So unless you guys have any other comments on the college coaches, I'll just wrap up the show. You guys good? Mm-hmm. I'm good. Perfect. All right. Well, that's as always, make sure you're stay tuned for next week's episode to see which one of these guys is wearing a fake mustache for the whole show. Uh, but thanks for listening to this show. Uh, th- thanks for listening to this show. I actually said it right. And I thought I botched it in my own head. That is my own speaking problem. But as always, thanks for listening. Yep. Thanks for listening, guys. Um, Look, we threw a lot of names out at you for waivers. If you're wondering which one of them you should target over others, please let us know. We can help you out. Um, If you are wondering, you know, if there's any drops you should make on your team, who to drop, that's also a big question. Way past who to pick up on waivers is who to drop. Uh, And if you're just looking for 
lineup advice, I mean, reach out to us. We can help you out with that as well. Either way, just get involved with this podcast because we can help you out. You can help us out. And it's a lot more fun if you do. So get involved. And thank you all one more time for listening to the Couch GMs podcast. Make sure you check us out later this week when we break down all of the other Week 13 games, give you our starts and sits. For Tyler Snyder and Cody Roadcap, I'm George Kurth, and we'll see you all later in the week. Boom.